What's up everybody and welcome back to the Cybertronian Exchange and today we have a new review for you. This is New Age's Air Guardian aka Skyfire. Uh, it's G1 representation and uh, uh, just got it in yesterday. Haven't even opened it yet so you're going to get kind of a first impression review. I haven't done one of these in a, in a while. Uh, a lot of times these I've already gone through just because I'm impatient and I don't want to wait for time to video. <laughs> so uh, get a little extra in it today. So strap in, it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer review. Uh, recently, I went to TFCon in Chicago. Had the luxury of being able to do that with a good buddy of mine. And uh, we went up there and we saw these things in person in uh, on sale for like $170. And man, let me tell you, the markup at a convention is insane. I had no clue what to expect. And I did not expect that. That was absolutely nuts. I picked this up from Terry... Uh, over at Terry's TFS Club, and um, it was $89.99 plus $6 shipping coming from a U.S. Um, distribution center. He now has a distribution center in um, New York, and I think it got here. It took him a week to process the order and then another week and two days to get here. So all together, it's about the same time it would have taken to get here from China, short of the processing time. Uh, so take that as you will, and I think that's all I have to say before we get into it. As you can tell, the box is done really nicely. Um, artwork's well done. Uh, we got both modes on this side, um, action pose on this side, and same as the other half. Um, of course, top and bottom. Open it up. Working off my phone, so I have I don't have a lot of zoom in, zoom out capabilities here. So. As always, it was also packaged really nice from Terry's in like a styrofoam box, and uh, he also included Autobot stickers. He always includes stickers with your figure, so if you're getting an Autobot, you'll get Autobot stickers. If you get Decepticon, you get Decepticon stickers. He did not double down for this guy, which is okay because I have of stickers so here's the instruction sheet pretty bland on one side they don't really do any kind of um, hey this is your figure um, we'll probably be using these just because how obscure the figure is it doesn't really like you can't look at it and go oh that's an f-16 you know so we'll probably be using these just so we don't inadvertently break it but there's a lot going on here uh, a lot of times I like to take my time and fiddle with it but in the interest of time and video, I don't think y'all really need all that. So, let's see. Pop him out of his clamshell cocoon, his spaces pot, if you will. And I'm impressed I actually have him wrapped in plastic. That's really nice. Uh, keeps him safe from rubbing while in transit. Like, he's got a little area right here where you can see he's rubbed, but there's no damage to the figure. Um, forgive me, I'm not in frame, but like there's, you can see where the plastic's rubbed on hinges in the package. So we're going to take that out. Set them down. Get this stuff out of the way. Just toss that down there. Now then. That's a pretty good figure. All right, so he's coming now with a QC sticker like Fans Toy stuff does. It doesn't have a QC number on it or anything, so to me it's irrelevant, and they put it in quite an obnoxious spot. Um, I think we can do without the QC stickers, especially if it leaves residue, which this one left a little bit. I'll have to take an alcohol swab to it just to clean off the rest of the sticky here in a little bit. Uh, before we get into the figure, let's go ahead and look at the accessory he came with, which is his um, his gun, his blaster. Uh, it's just, I think it's traditional. I mean, it's not G1 traditional, um, at least not to the toy, because I know the toy is based off of Robotech. But um, 
I can't remember if this was traditional to G1 or not. I know it's in the IDW comics. Uh, sculpted fairly well. I say fairly well. It's kind of blah. It's plain, especially through here. Not a lot going on. Got some sculpted detail there, there, and there. And the barrels are not hollow. Um, so, it's okay. It's not interesting a lot. You know, I mean, it's not like, oh my God, that's awesome. Uh, it's grooved to slide into the palms. Um, there's a groove in the palm instead of like it's reverse. It's, it slides right in and he holds it just fine. So instead of the, the tab being on the gun itself and a hollow piece in the hand, the hand has the tab in it. And, uh, so which is fine. Uh, the thumb doesn't move, so it slides in place. And then you wrap it around. In fact, the let's see. Bear with me here. Oh, it is not independent. So the index finger is not independent of the other. So you can't even get the finger through the trigger hole, which I feel like at that point the trigger hole is pointless. But moving on. We want to set that aside. Let's take a look at the figure itself. So we just have it together. Kind of came loose just in fiddling. Uh, very reminiscent of fans' toys. I have it out in the barn. I don't have it in the house, so unfortunately there won't be a side-by-side -side review or, or perspective of that. Um, he's got blue paint on his crest and silver paint right in the middle. Uh, looks like gray paint and blue paint for the eyes. Let me get a little closer here for y'all. Let me move a light. Let's see if that helps some. So, there you go. Gray paint, blue paint, and then this darker gray around the chin area to frame in the face. And then white molded plastic um, all the way around. Head gets up to about there, down to there. Let's do that again, up to there, down to there. There's no left or right, so you don't get any sass in it. Uh, and then the swivel. So a uh, little less than normal, but does the trick. We'll send him back out a little further. As you can tell, he's got red molded plastic, white paint, but then white molded plastic, red paint on his wings. Um, all this is... Uh, white molded plastic. There's no uh, sheen or anything to it. There's no paint on this, just the silver paint in here. Um, he has his chest piece that should flip or reveal the other um, icon, the other um, logo, Decepticon or Autobot. I think you can flip those. I'll have to look. Uh, it looks like his face comes off, which, I'm, in fact, I know his face comes off due to the fact that um, he has alternate versions that they're that New Age is releasing that are the toy line, um, paint deco, and other things like that, where they'll have alternate faces and a different gun, um, which looks cool, but I don't like the paint deck, the toy line paint deco on it. Looks really weird considering the shape and form is more G1 accurate rather than toy line accurate. Um, all right, so shoulders get you up to about there and you have a bicep swivel. Your elbow joint is, it looks like it's double hinge, but it's single, um, single hinge. So it only gets you about, I don't know, a little better than 90. It's not, it's not great. And of course you can get the arm all the way around till it hits the uh, wings and same that way. Uh, that's the bicep swivel. He's got a wrist swivel. So you can get the wrist all the way around. And he's got typewriter fingers, no thumb, no uh, knuckle movements, just a straight pin all the way through. And no in and out, no up and down for that. Uh, for his waist, uh, 
he has an ab crunch. It gets you to about, uh, it gets you, gets you about there. Yeah. And he's got a waist swivel that goes about there. Your backpack gets in the way. There's, I say the backpack, there's a piece of his back, back here that gets in the way. So, which is fine. I mean, that's more than we would probably need. You don't need him spinning 360. So, legs can get all the way forward and all the way back till you hit the backpack. If you pull his leg out a little bit, you can get further up. So, I say that's full 180 degree movement, which is excellent. Hip skirt gets all the way out of the way. I like how they did the hip skirt on this, how it rotates within that that's so so clever that I've seen more and more of Magic Square and New Age doing it. It's clever when you can get it to work both ways and get all the way around. But when the back stops or you're stuck and you can't move forward uh, to get your thighs back, that's a problem for me. I think that's just need some adjustments in their engineering. Legs get all the way out to 90 degrees. And you have a thigh swivel. Double hinge knee, which gets you all the way. That's actually pretty. Like, you don't have to use the double hinge knee. I think that's part of the transfer. No, I, no, that's intended. Uh, so, that's well done. Uh, let's see. You get lots of toe tilt up. Not really anything down. You get insane ankle rocker so and you have your heel spur out there so that's pretty much it on articulation i think he's fairly well articulated uh, better than most um the only thing that's lacking is like i'd say, I'd say the head tilt but that's not a deal breaker for me and um, independent index finger movements to get his fingers in the <clears throat> gun hole overall looking at the character or the figure uh, most of the hinges are hid pretty well, which um, if you've watched any of my other reviews, you know I kind of bang on them for that. Their hinges show a lot and their pins show a lot. Um, when you're looking at it from the forward-facing view, Magic Square is really good at hiding that stuff. And that's what I've been hammering New Age for, but I have to admit they have done an excellent job. You only see the pins on the fist and pins right there, and you see your hinges here, here, and here. Considering the figure... I think that's really well done. The only other bummer is this peg down here and the port right there really stand out. I think those are silly oversights that probably could have been done better, um, but won't know more until we get into the transformation as to could they have engineered that better, which I tend to think yes. Considering how big the figure is, um, I think there's plenty of room for them to have done better. Um, other things to mention, uh, I know I stopped at silver paint here, red paint here, blue translucent uh, plastic. We got red paint and red paint, and then all this is molded plastic. There is some die cast. It's, um, I think it's in the internals. Most of what you're touching is all plastic. Uh, there are die cast in the heels down here. Um, but I think that's about it. The only other bummer is, of course, you know, when we're talking about hinges and stuff, when you start turning it, you can see screws protruding here and here and here and here. You know, some of these poke out further. That one goes in while these, like you can catch it, your nail on it. Um, so then you got pins, pins. Um, same thing on the inside of the leg, pin and pin. So, you know, I mean, it's... It's a Legends class figure, and I know I'm being picky at this point, uh, counting pins and screws, considering, but, I mean, if Magic Square is what I'm measuring against, because I prefer Magic Square, then that's what I want to measure against. Um, with that being said, on the back side, the backpack cleans up nicely. Um, something weird going on there. I'm not sure why that is that way. I'm going to have to look as we go through the instructions. But white molded plastic but then this is all white paint and you can see how it's not painted fully on the inside there um there now you can see it it's like just airbrushed in just blown in gently um the whites do not match when it's painted on red and it's obvious um blue paint and then the afterburners i think 
yeah, it's plastic, and then it's just like this gunmetal chrome stuff. Same thing that they used um, on the feet. So that's it in a nutshell. Let's do some size comparisons real fast. Um, here he is with Magic Square Prime, which I don't do the whole Sunbow chart thing. To me, it's it's a matter of does it look good with your figures? Can it pose well? Um, you know, and, and I feel like this is appropriate size. I feel like it fits really well. New Age has been doing better about their figures that are supposed to be larger, are larger. And uh, that was V1 Optimus Prime, by the way, if you can visually tell. It's the one that looks better. There's DX9 Grimlock, and uh, I feel like that's within decent size range. I mean, if we compare all three. Prime is shorter than Grimlock. Grimlock is shorter than Jetfire, Skyfire, whichever you want to say. Um, and then here he is with Wheeljack from Toy World. Let me get his leg straightened up here. And let's see. We've got him with his best buddy, Starscream. That's DX9 Starscream, uh, which Magic Square knocked off. And then there's New Age Bumblebee. Which he's super tiny. Guess I should grab Braun while I was thinking about it. But uh, Bumblebee's fine. I think they look pretty good together. And then, let's see, who else did I bring out here? I've got, this is Mechfans Toys Blitzwing, which I also think is height appropriate. And last one, we're gonna compare them with Magic Squares um, Minasaur. So, as you can tell, height-wise, I think he fits right in. Again, I don't use the Sumbo chart, but it feels right to me. Um, what you know, what works for you is up to you and your collection and how you feel your collection should uh, be represented. So, anyway. Also, for just reference, back here on this base, these panels are six inches tall. So just in case you wanted a size comparison there. So, all right, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get through transformation. So I'm gonna crack open these instructions real fast and we're gonna go through these together. Goodness. So, first thing it wants you to do is it wants you to straighten his arms out and fold his pieces flat. And then he want, they want you to, looks like on the back side, his wings fold flat, which they come out of the box that way. And then they want you to open up this panel and this panel and then we fold the fists in we can close that back and then they want us to separate the backpack so they want us to do that and then they want us to pull the chest out. And the 
the arms and everything fold back like this. Now it's going to get back heavy, so you're going to kind of have to keep a hand on them now. Looks like the next part is to let's see. They want this panel here flipped up and then this rotates out. Hey, the cockpit opens. That's pretty fancy schmancy. And I guess we can go ahead and roll the nose out at this point. So all that comes out. I probably did that too soon. But it looks like it all just comes straight up here. So when you pull, okay, that's cool. That's a fun little transformation component. So when you lift that up, you actually pull this and it comes out and then you lift up and squeeze these together is what it looks like we should be doing. I could be wrong. I might be getting ahead of it. No, nope, it says lift out and squeeze together. So there's something keeping it from squeezing. Oh, these pull out here. And then all this kind of scissors down inside there. Like that. Huh. And what is all this about? I may have gotten ahead of things here. Let me just do that. Because that's how the instructions has it currently. Is all this is like that. These are out here. Haven't really done anything with those yet. And then let's see. That actually tabs in there. And then in the side here. These come out, and it's got little tabs right here to go in here. And we're going to do the same for the other side. Tab it in right there. Alrighty. And it says the head can fold. I'm saying the head should fold, but I don't see it folding. Let me get a closer look. Oh, they weren't talking about that. They were talking about that panel that tabs in right here. Okay. I'll fold that in half so I can move it better. So next up, these fold up onto the sides. And this tab goes into that slot like that. And same for the other side. And that secures all that. And then... They want this to cover down like that. And then the nose should flip up like that. We should be at that point. We are. So now, with all that, Sure, walk mode by doing that. So now it shows him laying flat, and we're going to address the arms. That's what they want. It seems to be like this, but it doesn't seem to want to go like that. Like, I feel like this edge right here, we're getting into the plastic. I'm not entirely sure if that's how that should be. 
questions are saying, it should be like this. But all that should be tabbed in. So give me a second to look at some of these particulars. It shows it like 90 degrees. I don't like that. But it definitely shows it 90 degrees. I'm going to come off camera real quick so I can get a closer look at what I'm doing. I don't know if I like that. What they want you to do is we're trying to work on the arm component. And so let me come back in camera here. For the arm component, they want you to fold these in. All right. And then these reside. want us to, ex oh, they want us to separate this part here. So now this comes apart like so. And then we fold. Looks like these tabs fold forward like that. The wings come out and we're supposed to unfurl all that. I don't like how thick these hinges are. So wings come out. I got ahead of the thing by folding the tips out, but we'll see how that plays out. Then we roll it all forward. And this rolls out. This rolls up and that folds up that way. So and then you kind of like it was in here like this. So what you do is you fold it out and then you have a secondary hinge here that you have to spin it on. And now it completes that section stacked up like that. And with him back on his feet. They want, looks like it's supposed to oh, those are there. Oh, I see. These fold in like that. And then they fold down like that. They have stuff, and just so you understand why I'm having difficulty, you can see how this is red and that's gray. But then you get in small areas like that where, where those are red <coughs> and everything else is just gray black. If they had just put a tent over the entire thing instead of just the line work, I feel like that would be better. 
Um, what they do is like the background has this gray shading to it and then they just make that area bright white and it works in larger sections like this but it gets hard to see the particulars like that so I feel you know from an instruction standpoint they could have do it, done a little bit better so like these smaller movements you kind of have to look a few down to see what you're looking for as to the movement so now then It looks like now everything rotates like on this hinge, like it spins this way. And then these go under. So that's what's looking like right now. So you, you, you spun it on this hinge and you gotta make sure these are fully extended out this way and then these tuck in, I believe is the expected motion. I'm about to double check the instructions. Yep, that looks right. So what you have now, looking at this direction, So now the arms are supposed to fold in on themselves. How do they do that? Or no, the whole unit now folds backwards like this. So now you have these up here. And... looks like these are supposed to rest here so we would unfurl this and flip it around same for this side I get my hands in here Okay. So by the looks of it, it's supposed to kind of go this way. I want to take it off camera so I can maneuver it a little better, and then I'll show you what I end up with. Don't. Nope, I was wrong. These fold back in. And then the whole thing is supposed to sit on top. All right, so that's how it's supposed to be. These stay folded like that, then it folds flat on there like that. So that's how it's supposed to be. And then the hands come down, our arms come down like that. And then this covers over the arms. And you got tabs in here at the back. And that was my wrist. Tab in right there. So now all that is tabbed together. Now we have a form of jerwalk mode, I guess you could say. This is still showing to be like 90 degrees and I am super scared of pushing past that.
I'm not going to force that. If it just doesn't finish transformation, then I'm going to have to figure something else out. All right, so on the back, I want you to spin it around, flip the heels in, rotate the feet out. Apparently, there's super big rocket boosters in here, which I love the thought of that. There they are. So I flip that out and we'll also spin it back around. And it looks like the foot spins around. Supposed to do that? How is that supposed to go? Oh, that sounded hateful. The foot actually rotates in and up like that. And then that tabs into the bottom of the foot like that. So that's how that goes. So we're going to do that again. Spin it and tab it together. Now it looks like this all combiner wars is down. In like that and then it all tabs together and our final hurrah is bringing it up and these are supposed to tuck into there and I'm trying these two tab into those holes right there Hold that flat just so I don't end up snapping them off. I feel like I was close. So the trick, I guess, here is instead of combiner wars and the legs down, and I was right, it did not go past that piece right there. It should never have done that. Those instructions are not too swell. So then that tabs in and tabs in. Like that and they say flip these up flip those out and there you have it and then like the absolute last step is landing gear pull that out pull that out and pull that out so boom and that's it Let me get these instructions out of the way Give myself some more room to work. Uh, yes. So let's take a look at them. As a vehicle presence, I think it's fairly decent. Um, my main choice, in, and I'm going to address this now, my main choice in choosing this figure over Magic Square's release is because I feel like the figure both in robot mode and vehicle mode are more accurately represented by New Age. And um, I know I've made comments on before why I choose Magic Square over New Age and all that other good stuff. Uh, this is an exception to my rule um, because after uh, TFCon Chicago, we saw more prototype images of um, Magic Square Skyfire. And it does, the sculpt is off. Like, and, and I know that it can be painted and, and to look a certain way, but the sculpt is off more so than it is here. Things that bug me about this are the visible hinges on the front line, how big this hinge is under here. Um, this area is really bulbous and obnoxious and should have been done completely different. Like, I don't even understand. It's like they just go, oh yeah, we got to do that. And they just plopped it on there. Kind of like how DX9, was it DX9 that did uh, a Blitzwing? 
Masterpiece Blitzwing. Anyway, I'm not remembering correctly. Um, I do feel like these should have been more of this and kept the smaller ones up here, but I mean, that's not a make or break kind of deal. The sculpting detail, whether it's the ailerons or flat panels, um, the rudders, um, all this sculpted detail is actually quite beautiful. I, I love the, the effort and what they went into on this. Um, all the paint apps and everything's kind of, kind of the same, but things like in here, you know, is painted, is, is red molded plastic and then white paint. I feel like if they molded all that was red in white and then came back and painted the red, it would have been more successful because your reds don't match and your whites don't match. And I think that's just um, an amateur move. I feel like they, they're better than that. But it's little things like that that make me choose Magic Square over New Age more often than not. Um, but this one was just too nice to pass up. The sculpt work is done very well. It's very sleek. Um, it looks better than the Magic Square, and I'm just going to outright say it. It looks better than the Magic Square, despite what I'm picking on here. It looks better than the Magic Square. I can, you know, suspend reality of belief or whatever you want to call it, but this just looks better. Uh, it doesn't feel like it has as much die cast in it as some of their other offerings in the past. Um, let's see. And I don't see anywhere where this tabs in to jet mode. I mean, traditionally, you'd think it would tuck up under here, um, but I don't see where it should do that. I don't know why they bothered painting that blue. You don't see it in robot mode. You only see it here, and I don't think it's relevant to the character. I may be misremembering. Um, and then the only other thing is getting this to flip around. I know it's supposed to. Yep, just like that. So that flips around. And so he can have his chest in either mode. I have both Autobot and Decepticon emblems here on the side that I'll be applying to that location um, after this video. Let's do a size comparison in vehicle mode with DX9 Starscream. So bear with me. I want to transform him real quick. All right, guys. That took way longer than I anticipated it taking. But for you, it was probably just a flick of a moment so there he is with uh dx9 starscream and yes starscream has landing gear as well so there we go now he sits proper Look, there they are let me um he's bigger so we're gonna move him to the back starscream up front and again i think um size wise this as well um, Starscream probably could stand to be a little smaller or uh, Skyfire a little bigger, but either way, um, they look really well together. And so, there you go. My hands are kind of in the way. It doesn't really do a, doesn't really stand on its own. So, but yeah, it fits, it suits the, um, uh, the look and the feel of it all and all in all i think it's an excellent figure uh all the joints going through the motions felt tight and i'm sure if i sat down and i just piddled with it i could have figured out the transformation without the instructions um i do that quite often but in this sense um for the sake of the video i think it's best that i didn't i don't think i have much else to say again i've chosen it over um oh yeah there's like Silverish paint, gunmetal paint there and there um, that I didn't point out. Um, but anyway, like I pointed out before, um, definitely like it over Magic Square as far as sculpt looks. And I know I'm only looking at Magic Square's prototypes, but they don't really differ very much from prototype to um, final mold. And I think that this one's the one that's going to win it. As far as I'm concerned, it wins it for me. Things that I wish were different, like I feel like these should have flipped around and been a little bit more refined down here. Um, feels a little open and gappy underneath. You know, it's just, it's crazy. You got a lot of hollowness and stuff, but it's fine. It's not like you're going to look at it from the bottom. Most of the time you're going to want to pose it like this or like that. You know, so um, I guess my biggest sore spot are these. It's just ridiculous. Everything else looks great on it. I think it's a wonderful sculpt. Happy I made the purchase that I did. Happy I passed on Magic Square. 
on, on this one. And when the prototype comes out, if one of my buddies ends up getting it, I'm sure I'll get a chance to look and review it and do a side-by-side -side comparison. But that's down the road a little bit. Not too worried about it. Uh, as always, y'all are welcome to share your thoughts and feelings in the comments section. Uh, things I can do better, do differently. And uh, anyway, hope y'all enjoyed this review. Y'all take care and see y'all next time.